Okay, so the thing that we're looking at today is probably the most challenging part of statistics. And so if there's any part of the lesson that you need to be concentrating, it is right through this beginning explanation because it's so important to wrap your head around the concept of this. I don't think it's too difficult, but people get themselves confused about it. So just concentrate really carefully the whole time. So this is what all of statistics has looked like so far. That was chapter one, two, three. This is what we've been looking at, the theoretical bit. We've been looking at probability, statistical distributions, and now we're on to the last bit, which is the hypothesis testing. And what hypothesis testing is, is determining how likely observed data would have happened by chance and making subsequent deductions. And I will explain exactly what that means as we go through this. So I have got here an introduction to how I want to think about hypothesis testing. I've said I am playing a game that apparently gives out a prize 20% of the time. Maybe it's this spinning wheel game, okay? I said apparently because I'm going to question whether I think that is actually true or not. Someone has told me you win a prize 20% of the time. I play the game 50 times. What do we expect to happen? Okay, we think that we win, we expect that we will win 10 games because 10 games is 20% of 50. Prophet, you said at least 10 games. Yeah. Why did you say at least 10 games? Because like, if you finish 10 of the time, yeah. I think it can be 10 games yep. more than that. Could, could it not be, could it not be t less than 10 games as well? Yeah, so I, I kind of disagreed a little bit. When you said it would be 10 games or more, I actually think it could be 10 games or less, or it could be anything, right? Yeah. You could play this game and you could win 30 times. You could play this game and you could not win at all. So when I say, does this happen, if you were to play a game 50 times, like this spinning wheel that we've got here, would you win 10 times? Let's pretend that we're actually going to do an experiment with a 20% chance of winning. You're shaking your head, Abdi. Why would you say, no, this won't happen? Yeah, exactly. The, the idea of it being a 10 times that you win is what we would expect to happen on average. But it's not necessarily the real world. You might play it and you might only win it eight times. You might win it seven times, all sorts of things. So does this happen? I'm just going to say no, not necessarily. Dot, dot, dot. Because we're going to try and explore what might happen if we were playing a game. So we expect to win 10 games because 10 is 20% of 50. And now we're going to try and think what happens when we observe some data. That's what I said on that first page, what happens when we observe some data. So I've said, as we know, we won't always win 20% of the games. In fact, the probability of winning 20% of the games is, well, here we've got x is binomially distributed. We're playing the game 50 times with a probability of 0.2. And I want to work out the probability that x is equal to 10. So using your calculators on the PD section, I want you to tell me what is the probability that x is equal to 10 to four decimal places? OK, good. So see if you've got that for me. To four decimal places, we've got 0 0.1398, OK? In other words, only a 14% chance you win exactly 10 games. Does that surprise you? Does that seem high or does that seem low? Does that surprise you? Yes, Why does it surprise you? Were you expecting it to be higher? Yes, it's not to do with this 20%. This 14% is nothing to do with this 20%. This 14% is the likelihood that when you play 50 games, you win 10 of them. I personally would have thought, oh, actually, like, oh, it's quite low. It's quite rare that the thing we expect to happen the most, it's only going to happen 14% of the time. But then I'd say, OK, well, we'd expect most of the time that our results were going to be around 10 games. So instead of looking at the probability of it being exactly equal to 10, what if I said, OK, let's include 7, let's include 8, let's include 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Let's include a range of answers that we might expect to see if you play that game. And you'll notice when I've done this range of answers, because 10 is what I expected, I thought, okay, well, let's go three below it. 
and three above it. That feels like that should kind of cover what I would expect for the probabilities. So if you have a graphics calculator, you can just put in seven and 13. If you don't have a graphics calculator, we're doing seven, eight, nine, 10, all the way up to 13. How would you calculate it if you didn't have a graphics calculator? Probability that X is? Um, less than, yeah, 13. 13 minus? minus. Less than or equal to six. Okay, but someone, if you can just use the graphics, can you tell me what is the probability between seven and 13? Andrew? 0 0.7860. 0 0.7860. In other words, there's a 79% chance you win between seven and 13 games. So, Interestingly now, when you're playing a game lots and lots of times, although we expect it to be 10 times, it's quite rare that it would be exactly 10 times. When you start broadening out that range of different things that you might expect to see here, the probability jumps up because you're adding up lots of probabilities together that are a bit higher. And so now what I'm going to try and do is I want us to try and visualize what is happening here. So this that I've got is um, a binomial distribution. I'm gonna just zoom in a little bit on the y-axis. So let's go up instead to 0 0.2 something. Okay. So let me just explain how this works. These numbers along the bottom are how many times you would win the game, okay? I haven't bothered showing you all the way up to 50, but it would go all the way up to 50 because we're playing the game 50 times. I've set the number of n as 50. And I've also set the probability of the game at 0 0.2. Where do you notice, oh, sorry, I haven't explained what the side bit does. The side bit calculates the probabilities that that thing happens. So where is the highest bump on this? And why is the highest bump there? It's at 10, right? The highest bump is at 10 because that's what we would expect to happen. 20% of 50 is 10. We'd expect to win 10 games. But as you move away from 10, the probabilities start to just drop down. And you can see over here, the probability of getting 25 out of 50 wins is so, 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 so unlikely. But the probability of maybe getting 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, this range in the middle together makes up quite a big portion of what it is, okay? So when we did the gap between seven and 13, we added up this, 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 and this probability, and all of those numbers that we added together added up to 79%, which is quite a strong likelihood of it occurring inside that range, okay? So let's go back to this. I'm now gonna tell you what actually happened when we played this game, and we're gonna try and investigating it. So here's actually what happened when we played the game 50 times. This is what I call the observed data. So I've got my game number running along the top, and then I've got the result. An X means no prize, a pink P means you win a prize. And I had to do it on two rows here because I wanted to play 50 games. So look, I only won five times. One, two, three, four, five times. That's a lot lower than we were expecting, yeah? The game must be rigged here. There's no way that it gives a prize 20% of the time. If you were, went to go and play this game, and you came out and you'd only won five times, you'd be like, what, it's only one giving me a prize 10% of the time? This game is rigged. <laughs> well, is this game rigged? Okay, that's what we want to work out here. This is where maths can become really quite, quite powerful for this. Because I've said that there are two things that getting a five or even lower could mean. Because if you've got a number lower than a five as well, that would still make you think that the game was rigged, yeah? So it could represent two different things that could be happening here. First of all, I've got this four-leaf clover with a line through. What do you think I'm saying? Bad luck. So one of the things that could have happened could just be like, you just got unlucky. But the game isn't rigged, i.e. the probability is equal to 0.2. Because sometimes there is a chance that you would play the game and the probability you got a five or even lower, there's still a chance that that could happen. 
But I don't know if you can see what this image is here. There's like a man with like a, an ace oh. tucked up his oh. sleeve. So this is saying that I think the game is rigged, okay? So the other thing that it could mean, shh, shh, the other thing it could mean is that the game is rigged. What does that mean about the probability if the game is rigged? The probability is, not the probability is fake. The probab probability is what? But what about in our game? If we're saying it's rigged and we only played it five times, what would we think about the probability? We would think that the probability was less than 0 0.2 because that was so low. We were like, why did we only get five? We were expecting to get 10. That seems like the, the game must be rigged. And so what we want to do is after having observed this data, we want to make a decision. We want to decide, no, 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 it's fine. You just got unlucky that day. Or, hang on a second, we've got some evidence here to suggest that the game is rigged. Because if we have that evidence to suggest that the game is rigged, we can then make a, a comment about its probability and say, you know what, actually, no, the probability isn't 0 0.2. The probability has changed. We think the probability has decreased. Or in some other cases, the probability has increased. So this process that we've just gone through is what is called a hypothesis test. And we're going to finish it for this one that we've actually got here. So let's try and find out the probability that I got a 5 or even lower, because if I got a four, three, two, one, or a zero, that would also make me think that the game was rigged, which is why I'm gonna look at five or lower. So, this is how we decide how we're going to decide. Sorry, how we decide, how we can decide. What we do is we set a probability at a particular level, which is usually 5% or 1%, and this is called the significance level. If our observed data is very unlikely to have happened by chance, given that the game is still not rigged, then we become suspicious and we doubt the information that we have been given. If there's a good chance that our observed data could have occurred anyway, then we're not suspicious. This will make more sense when we put it in the context of an example. And this whole process that we've got here is called hypothesis testing. Don't worry too much about these things here because we're gonna use them later on, but I wanted to print this here so you had it in your notes and you didn't need to copy it down. But what we've got, the keywords, this capital H with a little zero, is the null hypothesis, and it's the thing that we assume to be true. So in the thing that we assumed to be true in our game just now was that the game's probability was 20%. The alternative hypothesis was us saying, ah, this is what I think could be the alternative thing to be true, what we think could be true given our observed data. Well, we have played this game we thought we were gonna win it 10 times, roughly, and we only won it five times. So the thing that we think might be the alternative truth was that the probability was smaller than 0 0.2. That's what the alternative hypothesis is going to be. And just a quick recap, we did mention this before, but X is called the test statistic. It's the thing that we are observing. So on the next page, we're gonna have a look at what it looks like mathematically, and we're gonna try and connect it back to the game that we were just talking about, okay? So this is what you're going to be learning how to do. This is a hypothesis test for what we've just been talking about, and I've written at the top that this is the formal language of how we write it, and then on the right-hand side, I'm gonna try and jot down what this actually means in the context of the question. So, I have said that the significance level is 5%. This will, make some, this will make sense when we have a look at this. The null hypothesis is that the probability is 0.2. So what does this mean in context? Well, this is a, yeah, this is the assumed probability given that the game is not rigged. The alternative hypothesis is what we think might be true. Only five wins makes us suspicious and 
makes us think the probability is lower than 20%. So I'll give you a second just to write some of those bits down. So the null hypothesis is just saying, okay, cool, we're just going to pretend the game isn't rigged. We're just going to like investigate what's happening. The alternative hypothesis is where we say, okay, well, if it was rigged, what would we be saying in maths? We would be saying the probability has changed. The probability is actually less than 0 0.2. Why am I saying less than 0 0.2 and not greater than 0 0.2? Because I had less wins than I expected. I only had five wins, and I was expecting there to be 10. If I had won the game like 20 times, I would be like, whoa, I think the probability is higher than 20%, because 20 out of 50 is much higher than the 10 I was expecting. So x, let x be the number of prizes won. This thing that we're talking about here is what we call the test statistic. It's just the name of the, stat of the thing we're measuring that we're testing, OK? And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that the null hypothesis is true. We're going to just say, OK, well, let's pretend this game isn't rigged, and let's investigate what happens. So we're saying if the null hypothesis is true, then the number of prizes won should be binomially distributed with 50 games and a chance of winning of 0 0.2. And now is where I'm going to say, let's find out the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. In other words, I want to know, I want to know what is the likelihood I win five or fewer games. I say or fewer because if I won four games or three or two or one or zero, I would also be suspicious of it being rigged. So I want to know what's the probability that I think the game is rigged. And when you put this on your calculator, on the cumulative distribution one, you get 0 0.0480. In other words, there is a 4.8% chance of winning five or fewer games. And here is where the significance level comes in. The significance level is 5%. 4.8% is less than 5%. So we're saying it's rarer than the level that we have set. Because it's so rare, it's lower than the 5% significance level, we're saying, hang on a second, I think this is quite unlikely to have occurred with the null hypothesis being true. It's lower than the, the rate that we set. We just set this arbitrarily. We just said in the question, we're going to set it at 5%. If it's lower than 5%, something fishy is going on, and the hyp null hypothesis can't be true. So because this is lower than 5%, it suggests that there is evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Rejecting the null hypothesis is saying, actually, there's some evidence to support that the probability has increased. So the probability of winning a prize is less than 20%. What do you think would have happened if this probability was, say, like 8% instead? It's just bad luck, okay? It was just like, yeah, you're just unhappy with your outcome. But 8% is more, is quite likely. 8% is higher than 5%. So we say, no, you know what? The game still has got a 20% chance of winning. It was probably just like, you're just not happy with the outcome that you've got there. And this process that we've got here is what is called hypothesis testing, okay? So on the next bit, we're going to have a look a little bit more about the null and alternative hypotheses.